you didn't know, that's like a Wookiee sound. I thought uh, when this presentation came up, I thought, first thing I thought was like, I can finally show people my Wookiee sound. And then I came up with the idea of my talk. So, all right, I'll stop stalling. Um, so when I was a kid, uh, I remember my teacher told me that when I did presentations, I would literally do this the entire time. Um, so this is my first presentation since then. So if, I, if I'm doing this, just, you know, it's, it's normal. Uh, so all you really need to know about me is my tweet to follower ratio is huge. Not really, it's, it's uh, I, yeah, it's abysmal, actually. Um, yeah, all, I try, you know. <laughs> um, no, I'll, you know, I don't really, uh, I participate somewhat in the community, so I work at Dockyard. I like to maintain add-ons, but some of my bigger focuses, uh, that I like to focus on are products, teams, and processes. So with some of those formalities out of the way, I wanted to talk about principles. It's kind of a vague term, isn't it? Well, we're here to unpack it. So let me be your tour guide for just a few minutes. I call this the most badass city flag ever. Um, we're in Amsterdam, and so this, if you see those three crosses, they actually mean something. The red represents fire, the red colors. The black represents the black plague, I think. But then each cross has its own principle. The first cross is heroic, so it's, you know, laying out a principle for the, the Dutch people to be heroic. The second cross is... Uh, steadfastness, so if, if you start something, finish it. And then the third one is to be compassionate, have mercy on, I, I would guess it means have mercy on your enemies. Um, and I don't know much about the Dutch people, but those are kind of cool principles to live by. So why are principles important? You know, I'm not perfect, I've made plenty of mistakes, you know, in my personal life and career, mostly revolving around me, you know, being a brat. Um, but I constantly use principles as my guiding light to evolve. So anytime I talk about principles with someone, you have to get kind of really meta. It's not about the technical specifics, you know. Those are, those are kind of easily forgettable, right? It's really about your frame of mind. In some sense, you have to connect your subconscious with your conscience based on patterns you see in your everyday world. And that, that's really where you have you know, long-term value. So by observing principles and improving your underlying thought processes, you can impact your daily behavior and how you handle everyday situations. And while I was sitting up there, I was thinking, I'm like, wow, well, how are principles different than rules, right? They kind of seem the same. I'm not a huge fan of rules, but principles, to me, are what truly infect your mind. They're much softer and less obvious thing than what rules are. So you might ask, you know, we're talking about a bunch of cool JavaScript stuff here. Like, why do I care? right? And we all get, every year we get older and we become elderly gentlemen and females. And I think principles are essentially what older people, it's what make older people great at their jobs. You know, apparently there's some bias against, you know, older people. I don't subscribe to that notion or, you know, I don't believe it, but it's plenty obvious when you come across somebody that's not just skilled in their craft, but somebody who has taken their learned experiences and turned them into principles. You know, it's my belief principled and experienced leaders are essentially the antidote to toxic teams. So, you know, if you want a binary search through a word list, 
look it up on Stack Overflow, right? If you want to understand how to organize and write maintainable code, that takes some time in, in just dealing with larger projects, projects. But dealing with different types of people to produce the best results, damn, that's, like, that's the hard part about our job. And principles are why, are the essential reason, or the essential way to produce quality software. So let's just take an unprincipled man, right? Johnny doesn't have any principles, right? Every situation he encounters, he approaches with little discipline. As a result, he's unable to act in any rational manner. His emotions take over and his actions reflect those emotions. See, Johnny never reflects on the behavior of his actions. This is Tom. <laughs> not, no, not, not, uh, I just realized, not Tom Dale. <laughs> I'm not trying, <laughs> yeah, it could be, maybe. I don't know who this is, somebody told me that is somebody, but for illustrations of my talk, he's principled to the max. He looks to nature to see how it really works. He isn't fooled by how things should be, he embraces reality. He has clear goals and pushes through to completion. He surrounds himself with those that appreciate disagreement and are open-minded to hearing new ideas. He has meaningful work and family relationships. And that man you just saw, like, you know, the technolo technology equivalent is uh, Tim Berners-Lee. I don't think he looks like that, but um, anyways, no? Okay. Uh, so this is, this is from the WC3 working draft for HTML5. So I'll give you a second to just take it in. So this is a principle, right? This is not necessarily a rule, it's, it's a principle. And a principle like this sets a standard for so many different technology practitioners. A few you know, key words jump out at me. Um, which ones? promoting open computer languages and achieve through industry consensus, right? That's somewhat the basis for our community, isn't it? And then we also take the rule of least power. I'm sure some of you are aware of it. It's a design principle of the HTML spec. And if you just take a quick read of this, you know, it's so simple, right? It's such a simple principle but has helped guide the, the decisions you know, and thought processes of many you know, projects in, a, in any type of software realm. And it's one fact that has enabled projects I work on to have collaborators from designers to UXD practitioners. You know, I don't have to just do everything, right? We can have designers, we can have UXD practitioners being really uh, productive on our apps. So, I hope you have kind of a good framework, if you haven't thought about it before, of what principles are. And so I thought it would, it would be cool to hear from some of our own community members on what specific principles they have adopted to ship, you know, good software. And I'll start with me. Just, this, is, this is kind of the creme de la creme of principles. And it's one thing I always do with my significant other. We'll be talking about something like, um, I don't know, like, where do we want to live? And I'll be like, Let's, I want to live here. And she'll be like, I want to live here. I, I want to live on a farm. She wants to live in the city. And we'll argue about this. But even before we talk about where we want to live, we should talk about, we should first get in sync, right, about what our principles are. Why do we want to live where we want to live? And so the first, what I would, you know, um, suggest is that make sure other team members on your team are in sync. It's literally the root of every problem I have witnessed and caused uh, inside of teams because principles were either loosely stated or not stated at all. So if you're in a position to lead a team, make it known that these are the things you care about and also identify the things you don't care about. 
This allows you to be consistent and give coworkers, you know, a clear expectation of what you expect. If you're not in a position to lead, this is where you can get in trouble. And this is where I've gotten in trouble quite often as well. Ensure your principles line up with the team's principles. You know, make your principles, make your, yeah, make your principles known amongst your team. The next person I talked to, well, I didn't talk to myself. Um, the first person I talked to was Robert, and we chatted for a little bit. And he discussed the principle of consistency. And so his team is really big on consistency. And so here's one concrete example from him. He says, every PR has to follow the PR template we have in our repos. The template outlines, des outlines describing the why of this change followed by the how. It's always that way. If you can communicate to those who are reviewing why this change is needed, they can understand the how it was done in the best way, right? And then this, Robert goes on to say, this applies, this principle at their organization, the front side, applies to everyone from junior to senior. So how often do you review old PRs because of some obscure bug and looking to trace the why it was implemented, not necessarily the how? And moreover, ensuring consistency among teammates, nobody felt like they are superior to anybody else. Seniors don't magically get to merge PRs because they did it. They have to provide the context. So my question to you would be how many people still experience these issues but haven't, you know, you see them every day or every week but you haven't turned them to known principles among your teammates. Robert also provided a pretty cool uh, concrete example of that principle of consistency. And here's a solution that Robert takes uh, that approaches tickets in kind of a cool way, you know, with a plan of attack. He says, we use a buddy system with our senior and junior devs. Each ticket is assigned to two people. One is responsible for writing the code, and the other is making, to make sure it gets delivered on time correctly. And so think about how cool is that, a principle in your organization that always pairs two people so you have more consistent uh, code going into your projects. I also talked to Jen Weber. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with her. She's such an amazing person. And I'll title this as Prioritize Inviting More People to the Table. In order to make the community more, more sustainable, she says, I want to be a part of an industry that is inclusive and welcoming, and it's all up to all of us to build it. There are concrete ways to lower barriers to participation, like offering help repeatedly for reviewing article drafts, hopping on a phone call, writing up detailed issues for the easy stuff, and saying thank you all of the time. So imagine this is your organization. By laying out this principle of inclusivity, inclusive, inclusive, inclusivity, there we go. By making it well known among your team members, you can constantly refer to this when your team members are being inclusive or not being inclusive. It's not a, it's not a hidden principle among your team. And as we have seen with the Tim Berners-Lee guidelines, those principles have a way of affecting us in ways we would never expect, just like the rule of least power. So with this in hand, perhaps, you may see a slight uptick in positive interactions. That's, that is the power of a principle. I got another principle for me. I, I don't know if it was because I was selfish or no one wanted to participate. I think, it's, I think it's the latter. But, you know, I've essentially seen the world in kind of three types of people. And we all know these type of people, especially when it comes to reviewing code. The first type of person defaults to disagreement, but then maybe never comes around to potentially agreeing with you. The second type of person defaults to disagreement. You know, they, they automatically provide you know, a negative to whatever your idea is, but at some point might come around and say, you know what, you're right, you know, you're right. But then there's a third type of person, and this is the principle that I try to live my life by, is default to agreement, but provide points to the contrary. And by adopting the state of, the, state of mind of the third person, 
You can't imagine the improved relationships one can have over the years by starting with a positive interaction rather than a negative interaction. And the last person I wanted to talk about, or that I actually talked to, was Torin Billups. And this is an interesting one, encouraging others to explore topics outside of the day-to-day. -day. It's, it's kind of a difficult and sensitive subject, right? And if you apply, if you attack that idea in your organization without a principle, you know, things can definitely go wrong. You know, you can definitely uh, cause people to overwork or do things they might not want to do. So I really like how Torn approaches encur encouraging people to learn. His basic principle that I would distill it down to is encouragement with a light touch. So let's dive deeper. He says, I would like to begin with the end in mind. In this case, specifically, I want to foster a team culture centered around continuous learning. But how can you achieve this when people have a full days at work already and busy lives outside of work? Simple, come up with a handful of strategies to motivate people, then learn and experiment rapidly. And so here's a few things that he's actually has found work, found has worked with the teammates he has um, led. First one is a book club. Um, and he says, get the team together and discuss a technical or soft skill book everyone can benefit from. See what generates the most interest and make a decision. The second one, the second concrete example he implements to explore topics outside of work is kind of teach and learn. So Torn, if you don't know Torn, he, he engages people with raw excitement, purely from learning something new. And so his approach to encouragement with a light touch is, it all starts with one person who has the time to learn something small outside of work. This person then comes into work the next day and shares with the team what they've learned. So listen to the uh, interplay. This is a real situation that happened between a few coworkers of his. So Jared came into work with a new Vim keyboard shortcut. Torin came into work the next day with some interesting fact about JavaScript. Brandon came into work the next day to share about a new Python API he discovered. And then lastly, their coworker Matt came into work the next day and discussed a limitation with Tmux and the configuration for their dot files that solved it. Each new day, someone would come in excited, super excited to tell others on the team what they've learned. And so it creates somewhat of a healthy competition. And so imagine this is your organization. If your boss or company isn't on board or doesn't have a principle of taking downtime out of the day to discuss you know, various learnings, no matter how small or big they are, this wouldn't be possible, right? You would have to say, you know, Dan or Melanie or whatever, take the weekend to learn these new things. And that doesn't create a very welcoming culture. So all of those had a, had a common theme, right? Give your developers a time, the time of day to let enthusiasm and continuous learning infect your culture and team. So that's the last of the principles from people with our own community, within our community. What I wanted to focus on next is our community at large. So these are just a few principles that come straight from, if you go to EmberJS uh, guidelines, uh, you'll see these. And these are rather obvious maxims in our community. But without having them laid out, right, you could see how chaos can ensue somehow. But you know what we don't do very often is we don't evaluate communities on some of the soft factors. We rarely compare based on facts such as how well are people of color represented in the community? What levels of training can the community provide? What, what percentage of developers are happy with major upgrades? You know, I'm not, obviously I'm not blind to the pitfalls of our community, but I do believe we have a lot going for us. And the first principle I see is no developer left behind. We like to bring everyone with us as we move forward. You know, take an example like Webpack or you know, sometime in the future, tree shaking. If you compare React versus Ember, 
To get tree shaking in React, you might have to do some configurations to get it working for you. In Ember, everybody in the community gets a new feature. This requires the core team to think about adoption and development. And so as a result, we have a delightful you know, uh, developer experience. And I would imagine we spend very, or a lot less time at least, compared to other communities upgrading our apps. The next hidden principle I see in our community is we have clear communication and clear goals. By laying out these goals in a clear, transparent manner, we can be held accountable, right? We can get feedback from all people all around the world. And just look at any RFC, you'll see the discussion that happens with, I'm sure, many of you. And so now some of you might say, well, you know, we communicate, but maybe sometimes Ember doesn't deliver on those promises. I think Tom laid out a few of those. Um, maybe some of them, I think, might have been listed in EmberConf 2017 or 18, I can't remember. But I wanted to bring that up, right? Because it's, for one, a very important reason. You can fail at adhering to a principle, but it doesn't mean you still don't hold that principle near and dear, right? It doesn't mean you have lost that principle. I think this one's pretty obvious. We, this hidden principle, hidden maxim, is we respect and maintain relationships with other communities. Good vibes lead to tweets about Ember, including us in conversations, and even help adopting other community best practices into ours, correct, right? Productivity and performance, I don't think we've ever assumed these are mutually exclusive, right? Um, think about the past notion with higher levels of abstraction. One necessarily produces a larger footprint that degrades performance. Or how about the common misconception that Ember.js is slow? I mean, look at what our community members have achieved in the last few years. You know, this implicit principle that these two aren't mutually exclusive is why you can get Google Lighthouse scores to be, you know, almost perfect with a smallish Ember app, right? Here's another one I think is pretty important, training and membership. I, I came to this community with like, you know, just a, a bag and nothing. I had no experience, right? And what I walked away with was mentors and training that have improved my career significantly. I think this is, this is a pretty important principle in, in our community. I found that if you put in the time and effort, somebody, somebody will provide guidance and mentorship for as long as you give your time, right? It doesn't come free, but it could be the most valuable thing you do for your career. And lastly, I think this one's super cool. Uh, you know, diversity here is welcome and encouraged. And this comes from a lot of the core team members as well. Women and people of color leave you know, they leave for many reasons, but slower rates of advancement and aggressive behavior, you know, is definitely a few reasons. But, you know, Ember.js thrives on giving those people with a well-timed opportunity, you know, a helping hand. And this might be, this is definitely the most important of them all. We are a welcoming and safe community, no matter who you are. So how do we get the most out of life, right? The most out of our careers and the most out of, like the continued progress, right, we, of our community. We need to look from within to see the patterns that affect us. Understand the cause-effect relationships that drive them, and then out of that, you learn the principles for dealing with them effectively. So here's where I think, and I'm sure you all have tons of opinions, but here's where I think the Ember community continued, can continue to thrive in the future. You notice I swapped out you know, a few items, and so the black ones are the ones that I want to talk about. I think first off, focusing on existing developer code, especially our add-ons, would be uh, a pretty big win for us. Perhaps even LinkedIn could hire a product project manager to help push, prior and push and prioritize issues in our community, right? I mean, it'd be kind of cool. And, uh, I would imagine also a centralized hub that would elevate issues and PRs from across the community in whatever add-on it might be. So maybe, you know, it looks like something like this, right? You have the, the, the add-ons and the specific issue and a project manager could help and use this to, to help, 
you know, prioritize things. You know, you've probably seen PRs that have been sitting out there for a year and you're like, somebody pushed that, that merge button and no one's doing it. Um, that's what a project manager would be for. So, the second one I think is, we can make this an, a stated principle of our community is, is education. So think about it. Uh, there are a lot of design patterns that can be encouraged through more consistent education. For example, I, I still get questions about you know, whether or not you should use controllers. And I think EmberMap does a great job in exploring topics and patterns and debunking some myths However, even something basic from the community in collecting and laying out these in a common question section would help new people and ex experienced people immensely. And then the last one, I think, you know, I, I, this is a principle where maybe you call it, you know, come to Ember for an education and mentorship and best practices for building mo modern web applications. You know, imagine if that was a stated principle of our community with, you know, so many new developers coming into, you know, into the world. And I think our community can be a great place for mentorship. With so many, you know, new developers, that, that's essentially our, could be one of our main selling points. Currently, you know, we rely on like peer grit, right, and determination to to get people involved in the community, right? And you can imagine, in combination with the issue manager, we could set people on a specific path in, um, where am I at? Oh yeah. We could set people on a specific path to tackling and learning about things that they actually care about, right? We could even loosely pair those issues that you saw right here with somebody more experienced and willing. So what I would encourage is everyone to go out and start thinking about your principles. Share them, make your voice be heard, and hopefully you will reap the benefits uh, in your personal life, hopefully, and in your career. Thank you.